Hi everybody, welcome to the QB School. I'm JT O'Sullivan. Today, X's and O's, your favorite. We got a little specialty, double, doble, the snag and the spot. What's the difference? We're diving into it. Let's get it going. Welcome to the QB School. If you dig this channel and you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, get the notifications, let you know when we go live, when we put out new content. I appreciate the support for the channel. Other ways to support the channel. You can get a membership. You can join the Patreon community if you want longer form videos, usually three or four a month. Then you want the best content that I've created video-wise, check out the RPO course. The link is in the description to the video. I appreciate it. Now let's get it started. Snag spot. What is it? So to me, the essence of this thing, it's a three person concept tethered with a flat, the number one read, the snag or spot route, which we will talk about as the number two read, and then usually a corner at the bare bones, those three elements. Now, does it only have to be those three? Absolutely not. But as far as the core elements of it, flat, snag or spot, corner, we're gonna show you a bunch of different variations of it from a bunch of different NFL offenses. Let's go out and ramp up that completion percentage. Here we go. All right, so first up is the snag. Now, the vast majority of these examples are going to be from West Coast world, little Gulf Coast offense, New Orleans back in the day, Mike McCarthy offense coordinator, and the snag is right here. The essence of this thing is it is a tight end bubble-ish play. And so technically, it's the number one receiver, meaning he's on the outside, but really it's the number two in the route progression. So the essence of this thing is a five to six yard split. There it is. Snag route. Come in here. Find the void in the zone. That is the number two read. The number one read is usually a flat, occasionally a wide. Right here, it's tethered to what I'm used to calling power pass, where this fullback is going to come up, bluff the defensive end, and run a flat. And this thing is a staple in the NFL, has been forever. And really, it's just one to the flat, two to the snag. You alert this corner. When it says keep window open, that means high angle. Allow the quarterback to throw you to the sideline over here. Don't come out and run this thing like an out because it, all it does is shorten the window, tighten the window. So again, you can alert this thing. Alert this thing if you get backside. I don't know if I ever remember seeing that thing thrown. You can see here we got a full slide going here with the Hound 6. All this is is H6 in most West Coast world. Again, the halfback to the 6 hole. 0, 2, 4, 6 off the edge of the tight end. Everyone's blocking gap to their left. Doesn't really matter for snag. Snag is a locked route. Now, the little nuanced thing about this, and I, I get, get it blurred because I was in so many different systems, but I'm almost positive that you could come in here if it was man-to-man, -man, and you could return out, get out of there. So you're almost looking for a, a variation of a potential rub here. So you get to bluff the defensive end. Again, you bluff the defensive end because this thing looks like power. Run at him. He has to shuffle his feet, and then the halfback or tailback comes and chops that guy down. So he, he defensive end shuffles his feet. Halfback takes him down, puts his, helmet, puts his shoulder pad in his quad, and chops him down. So it's one to the flat, two to the snag. And then if you get flushed and you can keep kind of bailing, three either turns up the wheel or you get scramble rolls on the sideline where you can potentially come back down the tracks on the sideline. But really it's alert. If this thing pops on the corner, you know it's man coverage. You got a potential winner out there. Very rarely you get your eyes back. If for some reason you work all the way back, you just don't have a lot of time in these full slide protections. Again, we don't want to live in a protection where the tailback is blocking a defensive end in the NFL one-on-one. -on -one very often. The other element that's really important here is the tight end corner must release inside. Again, you see the bluff rules for the fullback, but in essence, this thing is let's go up and get it to our fullback in the flat, nice, easy, make it look like power, chop down the defensive end, inside release, get a potential rub with the snag, and basically just go one to two on the snag, back to three on the sideline for that kind of arrow wheel thing at the very sideline give yourself a chance. So really simple. I know people like to pretend that this is a triangle read like back in the day. Really, this is this is a, you know, besides for mini camp one versus the threes, you're not really going to get that very often. You're really coming out here just trying to get a nice, easy flat. I think of this as like a, you know, easy completion, trying to get the fullback a touch 
If you got an athletic fullback that, that can catch the ball, great play in 21 personnel or two tight ends, 12 personnel, where you get this guy who's been taken on, been J blocking the defensive end, blocking, blocking, blocking. Now we bluff him, get out into the flat. But this snag route is really what it is. And the important thing about this snag route, just what it says there, you want to find the hole over the tight end bubble. So you can we can motion him. We can line him up down here. We can line him up in bunch. I'll show you a bunch of different ways. But just think snag, tight end bubble, get in there, find an area, find some space to give your quarterback a chance if that flat isn't there. Next one here is, again, Z snag. But we got here from a different way. We're motioning across here. We'll go through the play here. This is a mouthful. Zoom is that flanker motion. Queen left is the formation. Flop is the alignment here with the X and the Z. 21 personnel. Apache is just hound to the open side. Open side, Apache. So again, H A6. There it is. Hot. We got this snag Z corner. There's a snag. We got the corner built in. You got to learn with the snag. You got a corner built in. Again, we've got that bluff flat number one and there it is just one two now it's a little bit different just because of on the last one on the hound we had an ex, uh, extended wide receiver running the deep over on the backside with the apache like this play a little bit more stinger release that just means that if four week were to blitz we would expect this tight end to pick it up and stay in and block this again usually kind of a short yardage maybe like third and two type play here but again, if he doesn't get that stinger release, that number four coming, he then turns into the hook on the backside. So just a little bit more of a full field read. Again, to me, snag is snag over here. We're going one to the flat, bluff flat, two to the snag, find an area. Again, tight end bubble, snag equals tight end bubble. Really simple, potential three backside just with the formation and how we get there. Don't pay a whole lot of attention to this outlet under or outlet from the back, again, very rarely would he come out and we wouldn't be chopping, taking on this defensive end one-on-one. -on -one. I mean, you don't have a whole lot of time to get all the way backside to get to a three potential run out, you know, kind of like a hinge out here versus man-to-man. -man. You got to know we got a potential bluff flat, and it almost always goes to the bluff flat to the snag. There it is, number two, nice and easy ball control, get a completion. Next one here now becomes a little bit more of a full field read. Again, back in the day for me, this was progression with an option. If you see PP up there, it means pure progression. You see PSL, that's pick a side. But this is, again, 21 personnel. Far is the designation for what's going on with the F right bunch. There it is. Gun 22. Actually, I might have misspoke. I have no idea. I don't even really remember what far was. <laughs> Too many formations. Right bunch here this is obviously got the bunch formation gun 22 is scat protection for us so they're going to go to the mic the offensive line's going there the back is going right here so if both of these two come here with 22 personnel 22 is to the right 23 would be to the left if they both come we're going to be hot and if we're hot guess where we're going flat perfect number one Okay, so the read, the play itself, snag, is the exact same three-person concept. And then X Omaha, X Omaha is just a quick out. So usually cloud adjust, easy quick out if you love this. And if you love quick outs, and there are people out there that love them some quick outs, one of those people is not me. Again, that's a really hard throw for seven yards and out of bounds. That's just my take. But go out there and keep hitting your head against the side of the door. Boom. Uh, I don't think that's the same. You know what I mean. Snag is the concept. Let's go flat. Now there's no bluff flat because we're not coming from the backfield. And it's a different protection. It's not that run action, hound or Apache, H. So right here, he's just into the flat one. This is probably how most people do it. Again, tight end bubble, snag area. There it is. Married with the corner. You got it. You're going to be killing Madden now. Snag, nice and easy. One to the flat, two to the snag, three back to the flat if you work that way. Again, just a different way to do the exact same play. Okay, so now we're kind of game planning a little bit. Again, progression with an option. But now we're not in normal personnel. We are in whatever we called it in New Orleans. Jumbo, trio, that's big guys. We're going to have probably three tight ends, two tight ends, two fullbacks, 22 personnel, 31 personnel. Either way, these are big guys over here. We put our best guy in New Orleans. It would have been like Joe Horn. Dante Stallworth back in the day. Again, go go get yourself some quick out. 
Otherwise, you're probably going to get some sort of middle field closed. They're going to be thinking you're going to run it. We got our big guys in there, and we run a concept that everybody in the program, in the organization knows. We're going snag, you snag. Doesn't matter who snags. I snag, you snag. We all snag. Flat, snag. Guess what? Tight end bubble. Find an open area. Tethered with a corner. Okay. If you're the outside guy, you have the snag. If you're the most inside guy, you have the flat. If you're the number two, guess what you got? Look at you guys. You guys are ready to go out there and play some NFL football. Let's get it. Progression with an option. Snag. All right. Now we're getting out of the mini camp plays and we're getting into real football plays. This is what I'm talking about. Now let's marry up concepts like we would in real football. We've got snag on one side, dragon on the other. Now you can let your coach just tell you what you think the read is, but we can also do some critical thinking for ourselves here. We love dragon versus middle field closed, uh, rotation away. What else? Man coverage. Good shots over there. Anything else? So I used to go closed, uh, rotation, away, man. Anything else? You guessed it. Snag it up. Let's get that flat. I love me some flats to fullbacks. This technically, yeah, it's got a chance to be a fullback with that regular in there. Eagles 20 personnel, I think, if I remember correctly. But it doesn't matter. It For us, we're learning concepts. We're in the flat. We're in the snag for the number one receiver, for the number two receiver. We're running a corner. Let's get it. Snag, dragon, full west coast. Here we go. Now I like this concept even better. This is the same exact thing. We still got snag, uh, dragon, man, rotation, away. But, but look at the personnel. We went jumbo trio. Let's big dogs. Let's get the big guys in there. And let's put our tail back and our best wide receiver over here, go out there and run a slant flat. Now we got matchups. Now we're doing this. I didn't talk about it earlier, but this is what I'm used to calling and what I make our quarterbacks do a lot of combo footwork. What does that mean? That means you can't just go back there and do whatever the hell you want behind the center. Everything is either a shuffle, a one or a three. This all depends on what you're doing with the ball. If you're going the dragon, you guessed it. Quick game, one step gun footwork. If you're going over to the snag, it would be five step under center. And so we're in three footwork. Hence, combo footwork. Look at that. We're getting it. One more of these snag dragons here. Just to make sure you didn't think we were ambi turners. Let's go to the left. Exact same concept, right? Dragon, snag. Now we're just changing out who's who in the zoo here. Now we've got, you got to have a beast of a tailback to be able to do that. Helps to have Deuce McAllister. If you want to work that tight end, if you know you're going to get the specific matchup you want, if you want your fast guys in the snag, just flip flop who's got who. What's got what? So we still got the flat. We still got the snag. We still got the corner. We still got the dragon uh, flat up over here. Nice and easy again. This is this is playing football at a high level in my opinion. Mixing up the concepts, getting your personnel to have the correct matchup where you want to get. Again, empty. Sets the formation. Tells the back he's going weak. Cluster is bunch weak. There it is for the wide receivers. Right sets the tight end to the right. Scat 23 is the five-man empty protection, scat, solid protection. They're going to the mic. We're hot off both sides in scat 23 in this West Coast world. It's different in different teams. They would be going right here. Boom, to the mic. Technically, that's who they'd be going to. Now, let's talk real football. If this is an all-else read and a closed uh, rotation away, potentially man read over here, we can mess with the declaration depending on what we see. If we see a two shell, well, I'm probably going to send the line over here. Does that make sense? I'm going to send the line over here because I know that I am working the snag. So I want my eyes over here. I can throw hot off that. I can't throw hot owl vision off both sides here. So if it's closed rotation and I know for sure it is, then I want to set this the declaration way over here. I want it blocked up. Now, it's not quite as big a deal if you're working the dragon, in my opinion, just because it's quick game. But if I know I'm going to work the snag, I want to set the declaration backside so that I can free up this and know that if either one of these two guys come, I can just rip it hot into the flat nice and easy. It sure helps, too, when the hot is the number one read. Again, combo footwork. It's not recess. Don't get to do what you want. This is one of my favorite plays from back in the day. So... Near right, this probably deserves a story, actually, but we're going to just insert it into this video. Near right, open cluster, mouthful to get lined up. Basically, weak side bunch, that open tells the, the Y that he needs to split out. 
200 jet, quick game, six man slide protection. Z snag, there it is. It's nice and easy to see over here. We got the normal snag. We've already talked about the snag. Everybody watching this video could go out there and run the snag one more time just for fun. If you are the number one receiver, you've got the snag. Boom, find the hole, tight end area. If you're the number three receiver, you're in the flat. Guess what? You're getting the ball. If you're the number two receiver, unfortunately, you're running a corner. You might get it down here. This is more of a red zone play. See, little pylons. Y'all don't miss anything. Now, the fun part. Boo, fly. What the hell is that? Well, normally, this would just be called Y fly. But because my man Boo used to play this position, Boo Williams was an absolute unbelievable ball catcher, ball snatcher, ridiculous catch radius. Struggled potentially with the uh, volume of what we were asking him to do. So you know how you get around that? You don't let it be a, a hindrance. You just tell him. Boo, run a fly. There it is. Go get open. The Venus, I think, was the back shoulder. But uh, Boo was really good at this. But <laughs> there it is. You know, you don't... Uh, Mike McCarthy used to say, I still say it all the time, you can count to three, you can play for me. And if you can't, sometimes we'll just tell you exactly what to do in the huddle. And there it is. So snag. If we get the matchup we want in the red zone, man, bump, let's get Boo the Rock. Touchdown. So, geez, that's a lot of snags. Now, what could we possibly do next? Spot. What could spot possibly be? Well, all spot is is an extended snag. So if snag was in the tight end area, spot is now in the slot area. So now we're just running up, trying to replace the track of the number two receiver. I will draw a spot. If it was snag, it would be usually a little bit tighter, and the snag would be running into the tight end area. Now the spot is more of out over the number two receiver area, the slot area. Oh my gosh, can we handle this? Yes, we can. Spot. Boom. Now, get nuts here. Not only does it change the area, it also changes the read. Now the spot is number one. The wide or flat is number two. Nothing else changes. Still got the backside alert. There it is. Spot. So instead of a snag, it's a spot. Instead of the tight end area, now it's the slot area. You are now number one. Versus zone coverage, you come in there, sit it down. Versus man coverage, you see this little dotted arrow coming back that I'm drawing over. That says run out. So it becomes almost like a little whip or arrow route. Boom, there it is. Yes, please. I love some completions. So one to the spot, two to the wider flat, three in this one, back to the pivot. Again, just go through the play here. Zoom is a potential flanker motion across the formation. Red is a formation. Split back, tight end to the right. Right sets the tight end to the right. Slot moves the wide receivers to the same side. Weak. 20 is the pass pro. Weak, solid protection. Hot, weak. So right here, hot off these two. Boom. Boom. Okay. And there's X spot. There it is. That easy. Pure progression. No option. Look at me. What was I doing? There it is. Nice and easy. Five from under center. Read the divide off two and three. That's my... Note to myself back in the day, that's just talking about what's going on in this spot area. It's what I used to think of it as. Again, nice and simple, easy completion. Let's get it. So the next variation we're going to talk about here is spot cross. So this is really just kind of a what if situation here. So normally the read on spot, just straight spot is spot one, the wide swing two. And we alert this corner that we've had in every snag or spot. Well, what if they're covering the spot and the wide? And what I mean by that is what if they're pushing this? So this inside player, inside hook player is covering the spot. The flat player, just saying some sort of close, is pushing out, covering the wide. We don't like that. Okay, they've got too many guys over here for us. This guy's pushing out to the spot, pushing out to the swing. Not good. What do we do? Well, instead of having this corner run to nowhere and we never throw it to him, let's have him run up and run a basic or a cross. So when we do this, when we call cross, we're telling the quarterback, we anticipate the hook defender coming to the spot. So really, it now it just becomes a high-low right here. We want, we're calling it because we think we're going to get the spot. If not, it's just a 1-2-3. Right to left, nice and easy completion. Again, it changes the read. That's the part, the intellectual part for the quarterback. you got to know the intent of it. But again, we're not just calling spot. If we're calling just X spot, Z would be going to the corner. When we call X spot, Z cross, we're telling really explicit, Hey, we're thinking we're going to get pushed. They've been pushing out to our spot. They've been pushing out to the flat curl area. Let's come back and do that. Thing that changes here that you got to know on the backside was that little pivot 
potentially on the backside if your eyes get back there. Now that has to turn to a, a corner. And I want to say back in the day, if it's split out, he probably runs a comeback. Can't have him running into the cross area. But again, it changes the read. You got to have a what if. What if they're pushing out to these spots? Well, if they are, let's run right where they're not. There it is, cross spot. So just so we can prove that we're a crazy heavy volume offense back in the day in New Orleans, we're going to go uh, spot here out of 70. Now, what does this do? We get there a little funky. Again, we had a pretty special tailback. He was able to get out there and run corner routes. Not everybody can do that. But again, you get different ways, different formations, different ways to line it up. But the essence here is it's the exact same play. Spot, a spot, a spot. Similar, snag, a snag, a snag. On the backside now, we've got that over to the over area. But again, difference here is 70 protection for us was just Mike declaration, tight end on the line of scrimmage protection. So we would be hot if the will or the number, that's supposed to be a W, if the will or the number four, number four week were to blitz. Either one of these were to blitz. The line is going to the mic, the tight end's in to take the Sam, and we are then hot off any of these. So again, just different ways to manipulate the pass pro so they can't get a beat on us. Again, just a bunch of different ways to be able to take advantage of what the defense has given us and how we can manipulate what that looks like to the defensive unit. But at the end of the day, it's just spot, like raise up and throw a five yard inside hitch. Again, just to make sure I'm touching on the most important part landmark wise here, snag is to the tight end area, spot is to the landmark or the track of the number two. So there it is, right on the track of the number two. It's really specific about what those marks look like. Track of number two, tight end area for the snag. Here is the exact same play as the earlier cross, Z cross. Now we're just doing it with a halfback. Again, taking advantage of our personnel at the time. But at the end of the day, this is just spot cross. So it changes the read. Now the cross is number one, spot is number two, wide is number three, or swing is number three. Again, on the front side, you can see that alert lion. That just means if we get a potential four strong there on the back side, we can give a slant signal to that flanker, take advantage of that. Basically, it's a built-in, it's a way to get a sight adjust in a West Coast world that doesn't really live in sight adjust world. So we had a bunch of those specifically for 70, 71 protection where the tight end is on the line of scrimmage in charge of the Sam, working with the tackle for the end in the Sam. Oh, and here we go, a West Coast classic. 22 Z spot. You thought it was just X spot and Z snag? Nope, it's Z spot. Again, it's all about the landmark for the spot and the snag route. You can see the spot is over the track of the number two. You can see that everything else is the exact same. Again, spot is one, swing wide is two, alert corner, work through the backside here. If you can get there all the way around, that's a big ass to go from one to two, full field all the way back to three. But again, this is our playback playbook reads, not really football reads. It'd be really hard to do that, in my opinion, to go from one to two. But I'm sure it could happen like seven on seven. Again, five footwork. Most important part here is spot over the track of the number two. One to two. If this were snag, we'd be down here running the snag into the tight end area. And now this is usually a flat, and that is now one, and the snag is two. So just little minuscule changes that can make a big impact about where the ball is going, what the intent of the play is. Here is the exact same play, except now we're out of Eagle personnel, which was for us, I'm going to say 20 personnel. I don't know why I want to say 10, but I'm pretty sure it was 20 personnel in New Orleans. 20 personnel, it's the same play. We're not going to spend a whole lot of time on it. You see it, you know it. Spot is spot is spot. Let's get a open. The spot is over the route of the track of the number two. Let's get it. Y'all thought I was joking about the volume thing, but we're for real with that. Spot is spot is spot with cross now. That changes the read. The cross is now one. The spot is now two. The swinger wide is number three. Again, I think the last time we'd had this play, we potentially had the tight end in here running a corner. Again, learn thing. They now, again, you can't have that deep over running into the cross, so we turn it into a comeback. I actually remember throwing this a handful of times. This is one of those ones that I think does work as far as a pure progression with an option, although... They didn't allow me to do it at the time, but I would have played this as a progression with an option. If you like it, throw that comeback, but you better hook it up. Again, call and cross because we anticipate the push of that hook defender out to the spot, that 
flat defender out to the wide. We're going to take advantage of that hook area, hopefully. Put this one on there for all my O-line friends. Again, just another pass pro, right? 70 and 71 puts the tight end on the line of scrimmage. Now we're into the 80 world. The 80 is where the tight end is off the line of scrimmage. So Zebra is 11 personnel in West Coast world. So again, just manipulating what it looks like for the defense, but spot is spot is spot for us. We're just coming up playing spot. But it looks totally different. Looks like two back, looks like almost 20 personnel. How we get our better pass catcher, dynamic athlete into the combination with the swing. We get our tight end, maybe a little bigger body, a little stiffer to be the pass protection element, depending on what you're working with personnel wise. But again, just a bunch of different ways to do the exact same play. Now, this is actually how I remember running it the most on Sundays. And so very rarely are you just going to come up there and run old school snag or spot. This is more, again, marrying concepts. Okay, The option concept is an option route and a comeback. Snag concept is the snag concept that we've already talked about. The number one receiver, snag, tight end area. Number three receiver, flat. Number two receiver, corner. So why would you want to do this? Now, we had a really good halfback, but if you wanted to be able to come up here, I like this type of play because it's got great man answers. It's got great zone answers. If you want to just go, if you get straight cover two, if you don't like the option for whatever reason, but for me, it's got great hot answers. So if you want to get into empty, let's have some real hot answers and we'd be used to playing the snag play. It's easy to come out here. You get a potential pick with this little flat into the flat. If not, we've got a great option Simple concept, one to two in my mind, and this snag really operates as a check down. But again, this is how it works. You marry up your favorite concepts together to be able to give yourself a chance against whatever you're expecting from the defensive element. Now, we put it as a pure progression here. I think I would probably, if I was playing this play nowadays, have some sort of an opportunity to know, hey, if it's hot over here, we're coming over here for sure. If it's, you know, potentially whatever you don't like this verse, which you probably like this verse, everything except maybe what I would say like three week or six, any type of rotation towards it, you might not like it, but even then you probably still got a shot at it. So maybe it is a true pure progression. But again, for me, I love marrying concepts that I like both of them that give me answers versus everything. Here's that same exact play, except now it's out of the big guys. Again, this is how you really start to be a jerk to defenses. You get the big guys, put them all on one side, Put your skill guys, explosive guys on the other side. Two best players is back in the day. Deuce, Hollywood Horn out here. Make them the one and the two. And make everybody else kind of the alert, the potential hot throw. This is really, in, in my opinion, when we start talking about being a great offensive architect, doing stuff like this, this is what it looks like. Empty, bunch ride flop, scat 23, halfback option, you snag. Yes, please, let's get it. So all those plays were New Orleans, Mike McCarthy, offensive coordinator. Now we're going to get into a, a few other NFL offenses and see the difference here as far as some depth and detail. This is uh, Green Bay back in the day. Mike Sherman, Brett Favre. Again, same exact play as that original, what would we call it, uh, Hound 6. This is out of, looks like 12 personnel, Tiger. Yeah, the U. Again, coming across, bluffing that defensive end, out flat. This is just snag. We call it pivot. But again, it's one to the flat, two to the snag or pivot. They had a little bit more straight up as opposed to into the tight end area. But the essence of this play is the exact same. If you know how to play this play at one place, you can play this play any place in professional football. Now we're into the digit world. And this play really does deserve its own video. This is one of my probably the greatest throw of my NFL career to a tight eight, which really I might see if I can dig up the old film of uh, my man Roy Williams getting his helmet knocked off, but that thing was a straight up dime. I'm not even going to talk about it right here, but I am going to talk about the 71 H swing. So this is the exact same thing as far as the snag or pivot. Again, not quite into the tight end area. This is just more straight up, but again, a little bit different, not with a flat. This is where I think that it can also be a swing too. Again, just different ways to attack the same area here. They change it up a little bit. This is maybe potentially a little bit more, uh, we played it a little bit more spotty as opposed to snaggy as far as who's first. Again, one to two. Every offense does it a little differently. You just need to know what the coach is like. Remind me, tight eight video coming your way soon. Here it is in Cincinnati. 
We got near right, again, the formation. Z return, like Z yo-yo. He's going to go back and come back. We got action 10, totally different. It's the exact same thing as the hound H6. Uh, then we're into the flat. We got the heart dart, 270 whip. So again, the whip is this little in and out. But again, I mean, y'all tell me, does that look similar? Can we, call, can we just call that snag? It, it looks pretty much identical. So this is what I'm saying when, when people ask me all the time, how you learn so many offenses. You just learn the play. This is snag. You call this bubble gum. You call this, uh, you know, big game fishing, big game hunting. You call this whatever you want, strawberry milkshake. Here it is. It is a flat one. It is a snag whip pivot two, and that's it. It, I mean, all less than five yards. Let's get a completion. Move on. I like putting this in there just because it looks so simple. Uh, this is just the Cincinnati read for it. Again, this is kind of the checklist. It really is this simple. I know this is like cornball that it looks this simple, but know what the hot is. One, two, three, you can play for me. Potential backside, progression with an option. If you love it, if you got the perfect matchup, I mean, let's go get some completions and win some games, score some points. Here we go. So that's a wrap. Snag, spot. I'm going to be honest with you. Not my favorite concept if you couldn't gather that from all these plays. Uh, not that I don't think throwing flats is important, but not necessarily going to have this many concepts to just raise up and throw a flat, usually to a back, usually a fullback, depending on the personnel. So that's just me. Now, I know a lot of people swear by it. I think that it's got some uh, good qualities. If you're looking for a ball control, way to allow your receivers to find some sp soft spots in the zone. But again, for my money's worth, we're going to spend our time in other areas. But again, I think it's important to understand how offenses function, how this snag spot play has evolved, different ways to marry it with different packages and different concepts. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I appreciate it, and I will see you next time. Have a good one.